Welcome. Um, we're going to do a very short video here and a tutorial with three examples about how tax treatment and bond yield are related. So first let's review the basic relationship between taxability and bond yield. So when a bond yield is tax exempt, investors get to keep the interest payments that are coming from the bond and other cash flows and not give any in back in terms of income tax. Because of that, they're willing to accept a lower yield relative to a fully taxable bond. So the tax exempt bond yield will be equal to a taxable bond yield adjusted for the tax rate. Municipal bonds are considered tax exempt. Corporate bonds are considered taxable in our examples. So for our first example, consider a corporate bond with a 7% yield, a marginal tax rate of 28%. And let's think about what yield on the municipal bond would be equivalent. Given that the municipal bond gets favorable tax treatment, the yield doesn't need to be as high to compete with a corporate bond. How high does it need to be? Well, let's go back to our basic equation that we're going to use in all three of our examples. That equates the tax exempt bond yield to the taxable bond yield. Now let's fill in what we have and solve for what we don't. So we have the taxable yield, it's 7%. We have a tax rate, it's 28%. So we simply solve for our tax exempt bond yield and get a little bit over 5%. In other words, if these municipal bond and corporate bond are similar in their other characteristics, like their um, rating, their liquidity overall, then we would expect an investor would be indifferent between a tax exempt bond that gives us 5.04% and a taxable bond that gives us 7%. Of course, this is all subject to a tax rate of 28%. Example 2. Let's consider now a municipal bond. Suppose we're given the muni yield. We have a different marginal tax rate. Now I want to solve for a corporate bond yield that would be equivalent. We actually call this the equivalent taxable yield. So we're going to use the same equation, only the information we're given now is a little bit different, so it solves a little bit differently. So using our basic relationship here, let's fill in what we know and solve for what we don't know. So we know that the tax exempt bond yield is 4%. We know a marginal tax rate is 30%. So we need to solve for our taxable bond yield. So in doing that, we get 5.71%. So again, holding other characteristics constant, an investor should be indifferent between a muni that yields 4% and a corporate that yields 5.71% if they have a marginal tax rate of 30%. Final example here, let's solve for the tax rate that would make investors indifferent. So in this case, we're given both bond yields, a corporate bond yield, taxable, a municipal bond yield, not taxable, and then we're asking what marginal tax rate would it make investors indifferent. All right, so this, this spread here implies a certain tax rate that would put the after-tax yield to be identical. Again, we're going to use the exact same equation here. This time, we're going to solve for the tax rate. So filling in what we know, we have the tax-exempt yield of 6%, the taxable yield of 8%. We'd like to know the tax rate that makes these two equivalent. So if I solve for my tax rate, I get 25%. The other thing we see here is keep in mind in the spread between a corporate municipal bond yield depends on the size of the tax rate. A higher tax rate makes municipals more attractive and corporate bonds less attractive. So the spread between the two will actually widen. Anything that makes tax rates lower will actually put the spread between corporate municipal bonds smaller and those yields will be closer together. So any change in the tax laws would have implications for the spread between the yield of corporate and municipal bonds. 